This is One on One. We're coming to you from the TISH WNET studios at Lincoln Center. We are pleased to welcome our colleague on the public radio side, Leonard Lopate his, uh, is the host of WNYC's Leonard Lopate Show. You've been doing this for how long? 27 years on WNYC. That's not possible. Well, I, I had a show before that on another station. Get out of here. All these years in public radio. Uh, people can check you out. I worked at, w at ABC a little bit. Okay, but w, uh, WNYC, noon to 2. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's the NPR affiliate right here in New York. That's 93.9 FM and AM 820. Right. Hey, I have to ask you, what do you love about, I mean, I know I, we love public television because we get to have uh, real in-depth conversations, no commercials, right? Good stuff. What do you love about public radio? The same. I like the fact that I can have a guest on and give them 40 minutes, 20 minutes, actually not have to stop every three or four minutes for commercials. That was a real frustration when I worked in commercial radio. There are the things that are good about commercial broadcasting, but I did some a little TV as well. Uh, but uh, getting, uh, I remember my TV show was a half hour, three guests, that meant seven minutes a piece. We'd get somebody really interesting in, and it was like, hi, how are you? Okay, thank you so much, goodbye. Uh, now I have a real luxury to, to do the long form and go a little deeper. Yeah, we're still challenged in this format. We still have about eight-ish minutes. Um, we try to, it's why it'll, interrupt as much as some others do. But let me ask you, do you go after people, Leonard, that you want, also your producers as well? We do both. Uh, for In the early days when we had a smaller staff, we pretty much relied on whoever was offered to us. And as uh, the show got bigger and bigger and bigger audience and we were able to hire more people, we got more ambitious and now we have a bo whole bunch of segments that uh, we have created uh, where we go after people, or if there's somebody really uh, exciting, we will will do that. Uh, it's a lot easier, obviously, if you're just relying on PR people to send you stuff, and mm. uh, all you have really have to do is just say, okay, we'll take that one, not the other one. But we have a whole bunch of series on our show that we've created that have forced us to do a lot of extra work. I have an underreported series. I have a underreported. Yeah, underreported grew out of the frustration of of um, knowing that some, it actually grew out of Rwanda. I read Underreported. I read a little blurb that said that all that the rivers of Rwanda were running red with blood and uh, because of all the bodies that have been sure. dumped there. And I thought, this is a little story in the New York Times and that, you know, that section where they have uh, 10 different things, uh, news in brief. Yes. So we created Underreported and we have uh, broken a bunch of stories and it's been quite extraordinary. And then we started Backstory because we were wondering, well, somebody like Bashir, who was so uh, important in Sudan, how did, Su how did Bashir come to power? Well, nobody seemed to know. So we did, we created another series called Backstory in which we, uh, we give you the, the, the backstory on a news event. And then that led to a series called Please Explain, where we, <laughs> where we uh, just ask all of those imponderable questions and uh, bring in experts who, and, and the audience calls in on those. Let me ask you something. I'm fascinated from a communications point of view. My, I'm not just fascinated as an interviewer, but I, I'm interested from a communications academically, from an academic perspective. I'm curious because um, I've studied it. People's interviewing techniques. Describe yours. I think it's just really, well, first of all, knowing what the, the guest is all about, at least having some real idea of what it's all about. I, uh, I, I understand the, uh, the Larry King philosophy of... Read starting, nothing. Read nothing and ask, uh, <laughs> why did you write this book? I will never ask, why did you write this book? Even if I, if I, if I have to, I'll find another way to ask that question, <laughs> but I won't ask it. I, I would never forget when I read... Larry King's book, I forget what that was called, but he was describing his technique, and I, I, he did say it. He goes, I never read the book. I don't want to know anything because I want to be surprised. Now, I get that to an extent. If you're the guest, you hate that. But the problem is you can't follow up on anything because you know nothing. Yeah. That's the danger. So and for me, it's really important to have some knowledge of what the, the guest is about and also to listen. If you listen... It, you're going to get all sorts of things that are going to come as a surprise to you. Uh, the guests appreciate it, and you sometimes 
you find out things that nobody else has found out. You know, you, you watch the same guests on another show and you see that they're doing something rather automatic. And if you can break past that, then it can be very exciting. Who do you think your audience is? Well, they have done studies. Uh, my audience tends to be older, college educated, but we have younger listeners as well. Um, I think it's anybody who uh, wants to know more about the world and wants to know about it with a certain amount of depth. So there's a lot of news junkies, but also do a lot of stuff on the culture. So uh, I'm told that almost every artist working in New York has me on in their studio. And uh, you can just walk down one of the, uh, the studio buildings and you don't even have to bother having a radio. You just hear it coming out of all the different studios. As an interviewer, I, um, my job is in part to interview politicians, elected officials, but then I interview other folks. I sometimes feel I have to interview politicians. I don't love interviewing them because I find it very predictable. Mm -hmm. How about you? Well, if you can break through, <laughs> that's, uh, the big that's great. But yeah, no, often I think politicians have this technique which I call parallel answers. <laughs> you, ask, you ask a question and they take one, they don't want to answer it, so they take one word out of that question and they answer right. what they want to answer based on that word. And you can do a follow-up. The most brilliant interviewee of that sort was Alphonse D'Amato. I don't know, it was impossible to pin that man down. But sometimes you can. Sometimes you can catch them in an inconsistency. And once you do, then you can go a lot deeper. Because then, then they start feeling they have to defend themselves. Yeah, that's why I've always enjoyed interviewing former elected yes. officials. They're much more open. Yes. Yes. Um, you're a former, you used to be a painter. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Well, I was a painter. I thought <laughs> I was a painter. <laughs> Come on, give me something. I was serious. I studied. You didn't paint houses. No, I was a, well, I was, a, first I painted realistic paintings like every art student, and then I was an abstract painter, went to art school in England, uh, came back here, went to grad school, uh, studied with Ed Reinhardt and Mark Rothko, some pretty good artists. The problem was I wasn't as good as they were. You know, I, I was pretty good. I was usually one of the, the, the more favorite students, but I wanted to be a great artist, and, and when I realized that I wasn't going to be I just moved on. Passion. I'm always fascinated by people's passion. Um, I ask artists and, and authors and other people, passion for what you do, having um, done it for so long, where does it come from? Well, I think it comes from constantly challenging myself. Uh, it's very easy to fall into a rut in this business. You, you know you have a comfort zone and you just stay in that comfort zone. And as I, I mentioned earlier, we kept on creating these new series and doing other things as ways of keeping us fresh. And then, you know, uh, there's putting in, uh, talking to guests that may not be in my area of expertise, but making it sound like I know what I'm talking about. So although my background was in music, for example, is more likely in classical music and jazz, I've had wonderful conversations just recently with Neil Young, uh, mm. Elvis Costello performed live on my show, and we've had a whole bunch of other people like that. And it's always been fun because, again, or, or Randy Newman has done a couple of live performances on my show. If you connect to the, the guest, the guest will open up and give you an incredible amount. For me, it's having people like you. Well, thank uh, you. Leonard Lope, uh, check him out, uh, Leonard Lope Show. 27 years he's been doing WNYC, noon to 2, every day. Thank you so much for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank you, it. Steve. It's been a pleasure. That's why we have friends on the public radio side. We'll be right back right after this. Thank you very much. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET Studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Adler Aphasia Center, empowering, enhancing, and enriching the lives of people with aphasia and their families. The Russell Berry Foundation, Fedway Associates, Inc., J.H. Cohn, Accountants and Consultants. We turn expertise into results. And by PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. 
One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.